Akron, Ohio, very well known in the motorsports industry for its tire and rubber properties and companies. But what kind of history does it serve for the ARCA series and one midget race? Let's watch and find out. Thanks for tuning in today for another new and exciting episode from Stock Car Facts, which we try to post every Tuesday at about noon. Or you can watch some of our previous episodes. Here at Stock Car Facts, we would really love to recreate the race day sights, smells, and sounds that we first experienced for ourselves in 1974 at Michigan International Speedway. But unfortunately, you know that's not possible here. However, we can do the next best thing in that we can share with you what happened at these events and we can talk to those people who created those memories. Or, well, you know, those facts. So we'd appreciate it if you sit back and relax and enjoy this latest episode today of Stock Car Facts with me, your host, Kevin Schwarzy. Oh, and by the way, later, you'll have a chance to comment on this content. And if you haven't already, please hit the like button as well as the follow bell to be notified of brand new shows right here. And we'd appreciate it if you'd share this on all of your social media platforms. Thank you. Today on Stock Car Facts. In the southern part of Akron, on Heilbish Street, you wouldn't even know that there was a major sports facility. Nestled right next to the Akron Fulton County Airport, and on the same grounds as Derby Downs, where they hold annual soapbox derby competitions. It's a part of town that time almost seems to have forgotten, but with this beautiful architecture. You've got your local union halls, beautifully manicured neighborhoods, forgotten restaurants and drive throughs such as this one, and of course some questionable establishments such as, well, tattoo parlors and <laughs> bar and grills, if you know what I mean, pawn shops. The Akron BMX track. You've got some ball diamonds here. Looks like some of those BMX riders are uh, doing a bit of uh, off-roading up the woods here, up these hills. And not that I'm encouraging it, but it certainly looks like there's a bit of well, drag racing and some drifting, judging by the uh, some of the circular skid marks out here on this almost straight stretch of road. And there's even a skate park for those local hey skater boys said see you later boys. With apologies to Avril Lavigne. And now with the most famous of all happenings at this location at 880. George Washington Boulevard, we're going to go through the parking lot up toward a neighborhood institution that's been here since 1930. And right at the end of runway 25 here at the Akron Airport, and that is Derby Downs, where they hold the annual soapbox derby competitions and have since that time. They also use it for local competitions, but yes, this is the location where soapbox derby racers come and run their cars down the hills for the national championship. Yes, on this site was what was once known as the Rubber Bowl. And that was the stadium where the Akron Zips played football for the University of Akron. They did have one final game here in 08 to commemorate the stadium itself, but they just realized that it's not convenient for the stadium and the university itself. You know, traffic-wise, students, they had already built another stadium down the road, and so this one fell into disrepair. There was one NFL game played here. The Dallas Texans, now broke and under the control of the league, played at the Rubber Bowl and beat George Hallis's legendary Chicago Bears 27-23, to their only victory 
in their one year of existence. Now the rubber bowl was not located close to the university. It was a few miles down the road, but they built it here as this is the only land available. You can see where the grandstands were, the sides of the hills here, and this was where the main entrance was. Unfortunately, last year, well, unfortunately for a content creator like me, they ripped down the rest of what was known as a stadium. You can see a touch of what's left of it right down here. But other than that, yes, the grounds are all gone that were recognizable as a football stadium. There's a little bit of a retaining wall built here for the road, George Washington Boulevard, because it was coming down a bit. In 2003, there was a feasibility study conducted to see whether building a new stadium next to the school would be more feasible. And that did happen. It is quite the landscape to look out across the open plains here, I guess you could call it, and the airstrip. It's got a pretty vantage point, and this is pointing mostly southwest. So there was a lot to do here and a lot to see because this was open right here. This part here were part of the stands, and this part was open to open air sites. Of course, the Soapbox Derby had already been there. Of course, not in this configuration. But uh, in this little swath of land, there's a lot going on. You can see there are trails of people that appear to take, well, maybe cars, some dirt bikes and whatever, down this hill. And we're not going to do that. Because at the Soapbox Derby entrance, that is gated and it is locked. As well as these fences over here. So we are going to respect that. We are not going to... If somebody locks something, we consider that they don't want you to come in. So we are not going to trespass. But we will show you a little bit of the uh, wiring that went in to the stadium. You can see some of it here on the hillside. And I just wonder what they're going to do with this parcel of land now that the stadium seating is gone. Because there was a little bit left up until last summer. And we did have a feeling about a year and a half back to come by here and get some video of it. And unfortunately, we didn't do it. So, okay, content creators, when you get that nudge, you better come. Also, we would rather not uh, face the ire of the local police. <laughs> you know, I mean, do we feel we're doing anything wrong? Not really, but they don't know that. So, we're not going to <clears throat> trudge down the hill. Excuse me, clearing my throat there. I had a sudden bug. You can see some of the parts of the top of the grandstands and the vestibules here. But, uh, looks like there was once some type of separation or a wall here. But, uh, this is looking north. And, again, you probably wonder... Well, what's the big deal about the Rubber Bowl, other than its funny name? <laughs> rubber Bowl, of course, alluding to the fact that Akron, at the turn of the century, was a very integral part of the Industrial Revolution. As automobiles became more popular, vulcanized rubber became a very important part to the tire. Now you may be wondering, why in the world is the rubber bowl, other than its obvious connection with tires and automobiles, doing on the Stock Car Facts YouTube channel? Well, it was a significant part of auto racing history. Being one of the founding officials when NASCAR was formed in the late 1940s, Johnny Markham, the ambitious sort that he was, decided to fill the void of stock car racing in the Midwest. And he needed, well, the rubber bowl wasn't a dirt track, so the more asphalt types of tracks he could find, the better. And it was in Ohio, since they were based out of Toledo. And it was a short track, local crowd. How can you go wrong? On July 25th, 1953, 
Jim Romine, and a Hudson Hornet, led 63 of 200 laps, and beat eventual champion Bucky Sager to win the first race. And Russ Hepler beat Iggy Gatona and three other Hudson Hornets by leading 196 of 200 laps on August 29th. Folks still speak romantically today of racing at stadiums such as Soldier Field and like they currently do in North Carolina at Bowman Gray. The Rubber Bowl gave Arquette's bit of history racing in a stadium just down the street from Goodyear World Headquarters. It now lives on in our memories, just like ARCA founder John Markham, 1954 champion Jim Romine, and the last race winner, Russ Hepler. Oh, and it lives on today at Stock Car Facts. Thanks for watching.